Hi and welcome to Salvages Reviews and Recommendations. In today's video we're going to be talking about Afterlife, specifically Season 3. This is a very good show on the comedy spectrum, as even with the first episode I had to pause it because I was laughing to the point of tearing. But when it came to the show, there were some hint character developments here and there and plot devices that I wasn't the biggest fan of. The one thing that Ricky Gervais loves to add in is uncomfortable slash awkward moments. If you've watched his earlier material like The Office or Extras, it's heavily added in and this show is no exception except when it came to the other shows it was used as a plot device or to add humour. This one felt like it stopped the plot and humour just died immediately with these awkward moments. I think it's getting to the point where Ricky Gervais just likes to make the audience feel uncomfortable and feel awkward. One thing that was interesting about the show is we see that the characters around him, around Tony, some of them are very lonely and they kind of struggle to be their true selves and have to sacrifice being their true self to just impress people like Kath, for example, who goes on a few dates and on one of them to impress a lawyer, as she doesn't believe she has a high status job, lies and pretends that she is a doctor, only for it to backfire when a real med medical emergency happens. We also see characters that are desperate for attention, like Brian, who's reducing himself to talk about grotesque stories about his wife and the sexual prowess that she would have. And it gets to a point where he's telling a story about him and his wife making a porn. And the story itself isn't either funny or remotely enjoyable, it's just really sad. And we see this character not only talk about this horrific story, but then going on to show the actual video he was talking about to his new flatmate in some weird way of bragging, which is very weird. Speaking of character development, Ricky Gervais's character Tony doesn't seem to really grow as he's somewhat stagnated between not wanting to kill himself, which series one we see him somewhat decide not to kill himself, but then not really wanting to move on, which somewhat in series two mode. And it's sad that he's in this as the supposed love interest that was thrown into the show, Emma, does have somewhat feelings for him but knows that he'll never actually be able to move on from his dead wife and that she'll never get a proper relationship out of him and finds it somewhat a bitter pill to swallow but finally accepts it within the end of the show. One major thing that was sad to me was that three of my f somewhat favourite characters didn't get to return in this series I'm assuming due to COVID restrictions, or maybe I just need to watch series two again. Uh, we don't get to see Postman Pat's prostitute girlfriend throughout the entire series, even though she is mentioned quite a lot. We don't get to see Sandy, the new member of Tony's workforce. I'm assuming she either got promoted or COVID restrictions. And lastly, the therapist character, who in series two was probably one of the better comedic characters in the entire show. Uh, it was a shame that he wasn't involved in this series but his f stupid friends Ratty and Alonce were. When the show ended it was somewhat good in the sense that all the characters surrounding Tony got all their problems that we get that we as an audience hear about or see somewhat get fixed uh, i.e. Lenny who is getting married but can't afford certain parts of the wedding so they're making the dress and doing this and doing that and Tony is giving out money to these characters giving them giving them some more hope we have a new character coming to the show who's desperate for a flat Tony is able to help out we also see Postman Pat meet a new woman and that being Kath who they bond over a dog who Kath is a plan to adopt and Postman Pat says that most dogs don't actually like him this dog but it is in particularly friendly to him. We see Brian somewhat get a confidence boost with a girl actually wanting to talk to him and yeah we see a lot of characters surrounding Tony having somewhat of a happy moment reminding me of series one 
in its Hollywood way of ending, of everyone having somewhat of a better, happier time. And it's sad to say that Tony is the only one not really being happy. He's happy for everyone else, but he himself isn't happy. As the one thing that he wants, he'll, he knows he'll never have until he passes away. That being his wife. With the entirety of overall opinion of this show, I thought it was good. But when looking back, series one could have been the end of this entire show. Not to say that I wanted it to happen, I'm just saying that with that, the way they ended it, it could have been that. But yeah, overall, I think series three was a great, it was a good watch. While I would say it's not as good as season two, it's still fun to watch. And I would give an 8 out of 10 for the series, but overall I give an 8.5 out of 10. When it comes to recommendations, Ricky Gervais has plenty to go for. I'm going to just say my particular favourites, that being The Office, the UK version, as we get it's the first real show that Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant worked on, and it's a brilliant, very com good comedy show. I do enjoy the US version, I just think it went a tad on too long. Another show that Ricky Gervais created would be is the e is Extras, another great comedy show. I think, personal opinion, his best TV comedy show. And a short-lived but still good show is Life's Too Short about Warwick Davis. It's somewhat of a docu-series but still very funny. Definitely recommend that. And last, but definitely not least, is The Ricky Gervais Show, an animated cartoon somewhat podcast show diving into the mind of Carl Pilkington, and a great TV show and brought Carl Pilkington to the mainstream. Film-wise, Ricky Gervais does dabble in that as well. He wrote and co-directed the film Cemetery Junction with Stephen Merchant. Somewhat of a 70s fairy tale story, and it's... Well, it's not like the best of his work, it's definitely worth watching, like, watching once. A Ricky Gervais bucket list film, you have to watch it. Uh, another film of his that is actually really good, I'd put up there, is The Invention of Lying. I would say it's very funny up until the last 10 to 15 minutes, it gets a bit too Hollywood for my personal taste. Still definitely worth watch, uh, watching. He is also known for his stand-up. And I would say his first three stand-up specials are best, that being Animal, Politics and Fame. Not to downplay science or humanity, I just think when it comes to replay value, those three have a vast majority of replay value than science and humanity, personal opinion. Now, Ricky Gervais has other projects, he was in Night of the Museum, 1 and 2, and f uh, how many fucking films they made, uh, he was in the film Ghost Town, and he did the TV show Derek, now, just to say I'm not the biggest fan of those, I prefer those, those body of work that I recommended earlier, not those, those are my recommendations, do enjoy, have a great day.